When We Were Young just happened. We were just in Vegas celebrating the biggest emo pop punk music festival ever. There could possibly be <laughs> the second year of it. Uh, Lizzie and I were, were lucky enough to receive press passes. So we went out, um, originally, this is not <laughs> part of the plan of the year. No, we were it wasn't. saying, thank God that in our, in our, uh, my incredibly busy October, just October being a crazy month Fucking in general, jam-packed. just jam packed full of stuff. Uh, you know, luckily I have this, this, uh, <laughs> this weekend off where I don't have to do <laughs> anything and I don't have to go anywhere and I can just sit at home and have a lovely little time. And little did I know they were like, yeah, you want to come and like interview bands that when we were young and we're like, ah, like, I guess we have great. to legally. I know great. that Brian messaged me. I think I was like in class or something. And you were like, Hey, look at your email. And I'm like, what? And I looked at it and I was like, fuck, I'm it's like, we like, gotta fuck. go somewhere now. It sucked. Uh, guys, it sucks. It sucks to be so popular and famous. I'm it's kidding. so silly. Um, I will say we were up for like good 26 hours probably. I think that's the actual Vegas experience. Pretty much. So we we went, we were like, fine, fine we'll go. Uh, just got on a, a super early flight here in Chicago uh, uh, up at like 5 a.m. to get to the airport. Just went straight there, straight to the hotel, straight to getting ready, straight to the festival. Uh, so full day. Uh, there was no wind, no wind this year at nope. all. In terms of wind, there was none. I will say that helps with us in other ways, but also we are in a nice air conditioned press tent. Yes, so, so there was that that we got. <laughs> a lot of this is going to sound like a flex, but it's really just like, no, I just like being comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, we, we, uh, we got right there. We just started in the press area, just hanging out um, in air conditioning with a bunch of people walking around, like doing press. Uh just as at the top here, just shout out to BPM, shout out to Dana, shout out to Becky, shout out to Natalie, Natalie, the rest of the crew who were so nice, friendly, so nice. So, I was cool. so accommodating too with yeah. everything. They were like, Hey, here's your next artist. Do you want some water? It's like, Oh my God, no, I'm good. But thank you. It's very nice. It's good. And we're like, Oh my God, stop being so nice. To also us. <laughs> shout out to, um, I'm not wearing the hoodie cause I finally took it off, but, um, the broken promises setup yeah. that was there, uh, obviously sponsored, but, I've been wearing the hoodie I got from them <laughs> since we got back because it's so comfortable. So they're like, <laughs> yeah, welcome to the press. We have water over there. Obviously, it's air conditioned. The bathrooms are outside. There's like a whole other like patio little area here. And uh, like go check out this little corner. There's like a bunch of um, there's a bunch Swag. of broken promises stuff. You can just take whatever you want. And we're like, what? Yeah. Wait, what? Like you could just <laughs> what? Like mm. it like it makes no sense. <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand what the con I, I don't I don't know it's it's like we are just a couple of idiots <laughs> just ended up being there and I'm like wait why are you giving a shit like this makes no sense well and me. then we walked by their uh their booth their activation booth too when we were leaving I think we were getting all our shit to head out and then we're like oh let's just take a photo in front of it and then this dude comes up and he's like oh hey like I take a photo for you and Brian's like no we're good he's like oh no like I want to get like a good shot like I own this clothing yeah. company we're <laughs> like, like oh! I'm like I know because we got so much sent to us from Broken Promises with like their press stuff and I was like wait I know that guy <laughs> I recognize this dude I'm like I thought so and I didn't want to be like wait do you own this <laughs> like you is this you he was also very nice and super nice his wife too because yeah. they both run it together very nice I'm just hanging out there just being nice it was cool uh yeah so uh who did we see like basically fucking nobody. <laughs> <laughs> All of our interviews were like smack dab in the middle of the day. Yeah. So we, I was like ready to say, okay, we have to get here early. We have to get in and like say in general, our first interview might be at noon. We were wrong. Our first interview was at two 30 and then mm. it was like one right after the other until like five, five 30. And we got finished early, but it was yeah. still like a marathon of interviews. And that was like the bulk of when ev almost everybody who was doing press we missed. was in there. We missed some 41. Academy so is upset. Finch. Um, we heard the Academy is and Finch YTs. from the back area of the press tent. Yeah, I was like, this is uh, this is a problem. <laughs> yeah, so we did we did get there and we did get a chance to see the Veronicas. Love that. Uh, who were great, fantastic. Honestly, I was like, oh my god, they're playing the songs of my AMV childhood. Yeah, this is yeah. what I wanted. She did say that out loud in a group of people, and I thought Brian was about to leave my ass in the middle I, of that field, <laughs> and then I did. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Veronicas were like super talented, super fun, uh, and they just they put on a good show. They were in latex, yeah, which in was the beating directly sun. in the sun, uh, which was uh, a choice for them. 
I hope they're well. I hope that they're alive. They're from Australia. Okay? They, they have to like, be normal. Listen, we saw them in the press afterwards, and they were still wearing the latex, they and they were like they didn't alive. Change. Yeah. Well, they were stuck in it at that point. It just, so like, they got like, like I got like, molded to their body at Ugh. that point. <laughs> I will say that was a heavy hitter afternoon though, because right afterwards was Michelle Branch. It was like, Michelle, I don't gotta okay. leave. I don't Here's gotta leave. Thing. Here's what happened. And if you look at the schedule, um, uh, Mothic actually pointed out like all the female bands that were on the tour yeah, or on the show. And I was like, well, actually Mothica, you missed, um, you missed Tiger's jaw, <laughs> but of the four artists that had a woman in the band, Three of them were directly right after one another on the same yeah. stage. It was the Veronica's, then Michelle Branch, and then Tiger's Jaw, who we also missed because we had to run back. And yeah, do and then and then Beach Bunny was on another. Yeah, stage. but it's like okay, so you put the three, like you put three female led acts on the exact same stage, one right after another. It's like let's just get these women out of here. And like right at the beginning of the day too. Right the like the day. hey, like, I mean, wow. I even brought up to Brian too because when I was like sending press inquiries, I was like. Yeah, there's not a lot of just like women on here who have like one responded to our interview inquiries and also like just on here. But it was we we talked about it, it was like, well, this was like a product of the time for looking back. It's it, there just really wasn't that many. It's Paramore. Yeah, <laughs> it's unfortunately. And they played or, last or year. like there's the or like, you know, they had Cassidy Pope made surprise appearances she and did. but it wasn't. Hey, Monday. She was just kind of there. Yeah. She just popped up. She wasn't booked specifically, but she was there. So, I mean, if they start bringing back more newer ones, like Beach Bunny, obviously, it was a newer band. I mean, band. yeah, and I think they had more last year, like Kitty and Meet Me at the Altar and, yeah. and these kind of bands. And then Paramore, too, obviously. And Paramore. And I think that's just like, okay, well, we had a bunch last year. And, like, yes, there are there is a low amount. I do think uh, having Michelle Branch on the show was a very weird addition. But, oh, my God, I loved her set so much. <laughs> a lot of people, because I'm in the When We Were Young, like, Facebook group, and there's a lot of people who were saying, like, she had the best set of the weekend. That's that's ridiculous. But also, she did put on a good set. She played all the hits. And we were around so many people who were like, oh, my God. Like, we, you just hear, like, the muttering from the crowd, like, oh, my God, she played this song? Like, it's this one? Oh, my God, this is who made do the song? We saw Michelle Branch, and then as you saw on my Instagram, I met Michelle Branch backstage mm -hmm. and said hi. And Brian got a was photo. absolutely losing it. I was I was shaking, dude. I was like, oh my god, because I I remember specifically listening to Michelle Branch a lot in like 2002, and like she was on VH1, MTV, all this stuff, and everywhere was everywhere. But she had like she has so many bangers, like yeah, great songs from that era, and like they still hold up. They still. Uh, you know, they, they, they still stand the test of time and it's like, okay, this is fucking rad. Uh, she put on a great set. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy that I get to just have seen it. But then she's like, just back there. And I'm like, well, I gotta say hi. It's like, she's right there in front of us. I like gotta mm. say hello. She needs to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we went from there. We, then we had all of our press stuff. So we ran back into the booth and that's when like all the bands just started to be in there. <laughs> like we sat down and we're like, oh my God, it's like simple plan right there. Oh my God. Simple plan there's, walking in. Uh, yeah. And then there's like, plain white tees. So we said, Hey, the best Tom was there. Tom, uh, shout out to Tom from, from plain white tees. Who's just like a homie now? Max from Say Anything. Yeah, was homie just too. He's like, oh my god, you're back here, and I'm like, isn't it so crazy I, I, how I, we just show up places? I was like, dude, we got to stop meeting like this. Like at <laughs> <laughs> uh, this point, like Max just is is an actual like friend. That's yeah. fucking weird. Tell that to fucking early college me. Like, no, nah, that don't make no sense. Is a real boy is my friend. Now. It's like hello. <laughs> um. Side note again, we are not flexing. This is just shit that's like, it just happens. we don't know how we got here. We yeah. have no idea how this is happening to us. It's wild. It makes the entire no sense. weekend. We were just like, how, <laughs> why are we here? And how do we, why how do we, we do here? this? <laughs> uh, also like the people who were doing press back there, like we were, we were like looking around, like find a space. And uh, the press people were like, well, aside from this section, which is MTV spot, like you can have it, you can take like any other area, yeah. like find a space. And I'm like, Okay, MTV is back here. <laughs> like, yeah. what the fuck are we doing back here? I will say, we met water parks really quick. We didn't interview them, but we were talking with them. They're actually Here's very the story. nice. Here's the story, okay? Here's the story, and no one wants this to be true. Uh-oh. Uh, we are sitting there, and we see All Time Low, and we see water parks walk in. And I'm immediately like, I don't really need to say anything to either of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know water parks. I don't, I don't listen to water parks. Water parks is not for me. And I don't really need anything with All Time Low at the moment. 
um, dear Maria, count me out. And Austin from water parks, like walks over towards like our area and sees like a, a few chairs. And he's like, Hey, would you mind if like, uh, we borrowed some of these chairs and we're like, nah, we're good. We only have, we only need a couple, like you're good. Borrow them. And so he's like, cool, thanks. And then like keeps the conversation going for a minute. Yeah. And so we're like chatting back and forth with Austin for like a quick second. And then I look at Lizzie and I'm like, damn, that dude's just like a nice guy, isn't he? Like, yeah. Fuck. And then like their entire team, because they're, I think it was their videographer, photographer came up to me and he was asking me like, oh, hey, like, do you have the Wi-Fi? How's the Wi-Fi? Like we're yeah. just chat, like chatting, like very pleasant, small chat. I'm like, yeah. So I never really listened to them and I never really got into them, but we're not, I'm like, they're just nice. They're just yeah. nice fucking guys. It was, it was, and it wasn't even just like that interaction. Like there was another time where they were like walking past us and like, he talked to us a little bit more. Cause we're just like, Oh, I just said some words to you before. And it's like, Oh God damn it. Like I only have seen Austin's personality on Twitter. I've only heard yeah. water parks uh, a little bit. And I'm like, this isn't for me. This is very like, it's for a younger audience. It's for a kids audience. And that's fine. That's, that's okay. I'm not, I, it's just not for me. I'm, <laughs> I'm staring down the barrel of 40. I don't need to listen <laughs> to water parks. That's okay. But here's what I'll say. Austin is actually like a really nice guy and everyone in the water parks camp is like super friendly. So anyway, water parks hit us up. We'd actually like to talk to you more. You're, you're yeah. all very nice guys. Yeah. So like that, that was just funny. Yeah. So we, uh, we, we, we did some interviews. We'll just, I'll, we'll just list them off right now. Something corporate. That was wild when we got that. <laughs> that was our first interview of the day. Insane. We sat with the entire band. Of we thought corporate. it was literally going to be like one or two of them. They're like, oh, here's the entire band. I was here's like, oh, my God, of, all five, the whole all something, five corporate. Members of something corporate. Andrew McMahon just sitting there. <laughs> They're goofing also about. Nice. Uh, yeah. And we're just like, OK, we don't fucking know. And I'm like, just. Yeah. They all liked my bow, too. They all liked her bow. Every, oh, a lot of people complimented your bow. They during did. The day. Um yeah, something corporate was super chill, super sweet. Um, that's a good convo. Uh, hopefully, there's good audio from us because our mics didn't work. Yeah, we <laughs> had we didn't some expect five people to show up. Yeah, unfortunately, we had some tech difficulties, and then I've been super nervous. Yeah, <laughs> about it, 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 it all. will be fine. There will be. It will be. We have audible. backups to backups. Yes, and, it will be audible. Yeah. But just just heads up for everybody listening or watching this. It's like, yeah, we had we had some tech issues only on that one because it was. We had four microphones and there were five people. Yeah, we were up. like, shit. <laughs> so it is what it is. The rest uh, of the day, though, we did not have that. <laughs> the rest of the day was one person per interview. Yeah, or, or and we were people. good and it was chill. We uh, had games we played. Games we play came next. That's who you're going to see Austin in the background of. Uh, Emin was super chill. Uh, funny. He actually was like the guy who wanted to like goof off with us, which was nice. Yeah. It was like, he was like, yeah, like let's talk about yeah. it. And like, we were again, we like our, our dumb little selves were like, this is the marketing brainstorm factory. Yeah. And we we're like, what would your boss, Mr. Peter one say about it? He's like, I just don't think he'd respond to this. And <laughs> I'm like, Whoa. Talk, talk. uh, so Left that's on fun red. one. Um, rise against. Yeah. Rise against. Rise I was like, against. I can pull it up. Tim was we great. Had Tim. So we, we ran into Tim and I think we, we talked about this on the pod. We ran into Tim at Raya Fest and I way back in the day used to work at the Apple store, uh, in the area where Tim is from. And so right randomly he would just come into my Apple store and I would talk to him and be like, yeah, like I'll help you whatever you need. Uh, also big fan of rise Against, So crazy that you're here. Uh, so I see him at Raya Fest and he's like walking by us and I go, dude, do you remember the Apple store <laughs> like 10, 12, 10 to 12 years ago? I was like, I helped you like buy an iPhone at one point. And he's like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, dude, it's so good to see you. Like, uh, this is awesome. And he's like, yeah, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, we, we do a podcast and, and all this. I was like, if you ever want to come on, he's like, yeah, hit me up. And so this was in no way related to that entire conversation. We just ended up like getting we rise got, against. Yeah, we, and, I emailed, I was like, Hey, we're from Chicago too. Can we interview the yeah. other Chicago band? And yeah. they were like, yeah, here you go. Sure. And I was like, ahead. cool. That's awesome. That's what I wanted. So Tim went on stage with 30 seconds to Mars, uh, and saying this is war. And I'm like, that's crazy. That's crazy because 30 seconds to Mars they do collabs. They did collabs at Lollapalooza yeah. and, and, uh, at, well, I guess just Lollapalooza. They did some collabs and to see like Tim be the person like chosen. And you, it's, it's, it's wild that it's Jerry like Leto would worlds be like, yeah. colliding in that way. Yeah. Uh, Sunday we'll, we'll get to this too, but Sunday he brought on Kenny Hoopla for the kill. And I'm like, dude, I was like, it. holy Jared, shit. Jerry Leto is for all intents and purposes, a weird motherfucker, <laughs> but he's, 
<laughs> he gets it. Yeah. So that, that was our third interview or our, our fourth interview with the yellow card and Sean. Um, our fifth interview was with Tiger's jaw who we met here in Chicago. We met them at an emo night here. We made fast friends at that emo night and we hung out with Tiger's jaw that whole time. So like getting them on the pod, they were also like, how do I know you? <laughs> like, yeah, they were like you. It's they were also very you know, nice. They w- that was our interview where we like barely talked about their music or them. We talked about like life and stuff, and then, like that might have been my favorite interview of the day because they are so chill and they're so nice. Um, I texted or I messaged um, Morgan from Emo Night because that's his favorite band, <laughs> and so he was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> he's like, he uh, uh, Morgan told me he's like that was the only interview I've ever done that I was actually nervous for. <laughs> And I think that's really funny because they're just, they're sweet humans. They're great. Yeah. They're very um, genuine and nice. Yeah. So, so shout out to Tiger's Jaw. If you don't listen to Tiger's Jaw, go listen to Tiger's Jaw. They're just absolute sweethearts. Um, and our last interview of the day was with Cassidy Pope. Yeah. Surprise. We got that email and Brian was like, Cassidy Pope. And again, I was not paying attention. Lizzie just gets e- like, if Lizzie <laughs> doesn't message me first, I just all caps and go, fuck. Oh my God. Cassidy oh Pope is the sweetest. My God. Holy shit. Like I want to have like a nor like I want to actually sit down and have like a full bowl conversation. I also just like want to be she her would friend. Be the nicest person, like just the chillest person yeah. to go and hang out with. I just thought she she's doing a collab with Crooked Teeth. Yeah, our love friends with Crooked Teeth. I'm like fuck yeah, absolutely insane. Yes, uh, and the stuff that she was talking about for wanting to tour more and get more back into pop punk. I was like, God, like she has like this mega mind energy that like she yeah, she's oh so she's cool. She's on top of it right now. Uh, shouts to Ka- Cassidy Pope, just an absolute treat. Uh, you would you would think like her going from the voice to country uh, to country and like doing like all this stuff like outside of the emo pop punk scene that she'd be like I don't really have to do this like uh, this is kind of beneath me talking who are these people I'm talking to and she could not have been more just like giving and friendly and open and like yeah I cannot speak enough nice things about Cassidy Pope just an absolute treat um and th- what a way to end the day yeah like right? she was our last interview we had a marathon of interviews and she was our last one we finished early too so we were able to at least catch a couple other bands afterwards we like yeah. got our shit together and we're like all right let's get some drinks and uh we separated and saw our respective bands so we, we went to, to yeah we went to go uh i went to the main stages and i watched um i watched rise against or i think we, we were we both, both there watched rise, rise yeah. against, and then you yeah. were like i'm gonna go see some other ones so i'll tell at least the bands i saw on the main stage uh i watched Rise Against, and then right after them was Good Charlotte. Uh, Good Charlotte has so many good songs, <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, that was the worst set of the day. That's, that's what I've been hearing consensus of. It was. I don't think it was that bad. I'll be honest. I do not think it was... I don't, I don't think it was... Cr- well, it's also been a be the while since the they've played a show, too, right? Yeah, but like they've been reunited for a little while. They took some time off. They've been reunited. Um and I don't know. I don't think it was the worst. I think that their catalog, the the singles that they can play are so strong. Yeah. They have so many good tracks. Well, I was thinking, I was like, what if I stay? Because like, I've never seen good Charlotte live. So I was like, what if I say and see this? But I'm like, no, I, I missed the front bottoms last like three fucking times. I've been here. I this is my yeah, chance. Everyone needed to go see the front bottoms. Uh, no, they, I, they played little things. Like you got me. I'm in. Little things was, uh, was a great set. All right. Good Charlotte. And then 30 seconds to Mars came on after. And what I'll say is, I don't think like 30 seconds to Mars only played two songs off a uh, uh, beautiful lie. Now would they just played Lollapalooza? I yeah. saw them at the after show. They did not play attack. They did not play attack at that show, but they sound checked to it at the house of blues. So I'm like, they must be going to play attack because what I believe happens. I don't know this. I didn't ask anybody. Nobody said this. So this is my conjecture and my opinion, my thought process. The fest says you're playing the old shit. <laughs> you're playing for 30 <laughs> minutes. You're hitting all the old songs. 30 seconds to Mars does not play the old songs. Now, the reason for that is that Jerry Leto cannot play. them. <laughs> he cannot sing that that high. And that's why they pitch a lot of those songs down. So, and I've said this many times when they play the kill now, they pitch it down to such a, 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 a level where you cannot recognize the song. And that is the issue with it. But that's never going to change. That's, that's what we have now. That's what we're going to get. I mean, we've seen a lot of bands do that. Like starting line says like, we have to do that. Do it. Yeah. Starting line does it. And it's like, I get it. You wrote songs when you were 16, you aren't 16 anymore. You cannot sing that high. Uh, and Kenny Vasoli has said that many times. Yeah. It's like, dude, I, this sucks. <laughs> I'm singing songs from when I was a child. Um, it's, it's part of growing up and it's part of being an artist. Like the, the you have to make choices and I think that's why Jared doesn't scream anymore either. So like, there's a lot of these songs that like, he's just not going to do. 
I would love to hear from yesterday. I would give anything to hear from yesterday. Um, I, it's not happening. It's not, it's never going to happen. 30 seconds to Mars is a massive band. They are a very, they're very popular. They have a lot of listeners. They're a massive band. 30 seconds to Mars will always get this rap because they have moved away from that emo scene and they are doing more like pop, like indie pop EDM, I, I call it maximalist. Like they put everything they can in the fucking yeah. song. They don't care. And they just throw everything they can at the wall. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's good to me. <laughs> so I saw a simple plan. Love that again, really fun. They play the what's new Scooby-Doo song. We love to see it. They had Scooby-Doo's. They did have Scooby-Doo's. They, they do the Scoob. They did. There were some guys around me. They were like, is this a Scooby-Doo song? And I'm like, yeah, you uncultured swine. Hello. Yeah. Oh. Every band, <laughs> the fucking Bowling for Soup, had to play the Phineas and Ferb well, song. Well, they, they brought up Dr. Dubenschmortz to do it, too. I'm saying. We missed that one because we were at Blink. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, also, I stand by. Blink was good. The crowd for Blink was fucking massive. We could not get. We couldn't get that close. No. We were in the back, and I'm like, Brian, there's no fucking no, way. Which is fine. They, by the end of the day, they turn on these like other speakers, and sound is actually really good. Yeah, you can last hear year, everything. the sound was really like in and out on the main stages. It was not that good last year. It just wasn't. Yeah. But like by the time we were there, we were hearing all the all the hits, all the singles, all the good shit. We heard I Miss You. It's, it's all you need. I probably miss aliens exist, which upsets yeah, me. Yeah, of course. Or going away to college. Yep. They played all that early, but it was a great set. Uh, I, you know, as, as somebody who, as I've said many times, I don't have the same nostalgia for blink. Cause I just never got into blink as a kid. And, and so when they came back, I'm like, I don't really have interest in trying to go to, to their show. Um, but I have interest in seeing them when we were young. Cause they're, they're here. They're and, there. And I, I would like to see, I don't, I don't think for me, there were any bands that were playing at that time that I was like, I know as many songs or I'm as interested in. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch blink. Um, great set. I actually liked, they closed with, uh, one more time. Yeah. That I'm was like, actually really nice. nice. It was cool. Yeah. So we watched blink and then we, we ran off. I wanted to go watch lit, uh, instead of green day, uh, which I, I stand by it. Lit was great. Um, they still got it. They're still fun as fuck to watch play. Um, yeah, and then we watched Kenny Hoopla. When I saw that their set list, what it was afterwards, I'm pretty, like, because it was a fest, it wasn't like their secret show that they did where they played Dookie in its entirety. Yep. Um, Crying because I wasn't there. But <laughs> they were they were probably going to do their usual stadium arena set list, which is pretty much what they did. They threw in a couple songs I really like, like Letter Bomb. So I don't feel like I missed out. But I was also like, no, I have to see my boy Kenny. <laughs> Dude, Kenny put on a He great came out show. with, like, a fucking string like quartet. I'm like, hello. Oh. He was so on it. I mean, I will say the way that they had that stage split up though, the VIP was like way too big. We were on the, we were on the silly. wrong side. We should have gone around. Like yeah. they have like the middle area. So the, like the sound can go up there. There's like security, all that. And then like on the, on the right side facing the stage, there's like the VIP section. So you can get closer. And then on the other side, there isn't. So you could get closer to the stage if you, if we went around to the other side, but we would have had to go all the way around. Yeah, this, And we like, were like booth. so tired. We're like, well, we're, we're going to, Leave it's right fine. after this. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, this so. is probably the first time I have I haven't been in a Kenny Hoopla pit since I first saw him at Riot Fest. Pits are not really a thing at when we were young. For Kenny Hoopla, they had a smaller pit, be, but yeah. I think it was just because they had like that more targeted I audience. And I think that's why. I think that the reason they do that is because they know that if you spend a lot of money, you're probably not mosh pitting, <laughs> and so like you're in the area where it's like we're just breaking up the pit with like fences and shit. Yeah, but I, there was not a lot of pitting. I was really looking forward to a wall of death, Michelle Branch. Honestly, I would that if that happened at Riot Fest, we'd all be fucking there. I was like, JR, where are you? Oh, where are you? Same I'm thing trying during to the Veronica's on touch. Like, let's go. Like, dun, 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 dun. oh shit. Yeah, there was. When this song kicks in. <laughs> That's what I was also sure. Like, because last year, too, there were a lot of pits. Yeah. So I'm kind of sure. I'm, I'm wondering if just a bunch of people complained. Yes. And they were all whining. Fucking kids complain. Whining. Every child complains. Just let, just let us pit. But Kenny also did jump into the audience. He still. jumped into the audience. Yeah. And I, cause I was wondering, I'm like, Jared well, there's this too. big fucking Jerry Leto came into yeah. the audience too. In the trenches. In the trenches. <laughs> You're like, guys, when Good everywhere comes in, when everywhere comes in, fucking, fucking circle pit, fucking circle pit. Let's go. Yeah. I was wondering who did have pits. Cause that was my biggest. Cause I feel like every time I walk past and I'm like, I don't see anybody beating the shit out of each other. We were in the Michelle branches. <laughs> Yeah, I, 
I mean, I'm sure there were, I, I didn't see any and I was, I was just surprised by it, but I think that that's I like, mean, Pierce the Veil would make sense. Uh, probably. Oh yeah. Vic uh. Quint was like in like right there and we were waiting. They're like, nah, they're, he's going to be too busy. Yeah. Let's take a photo with you. And we're like, all right, bye. I was trying to, I was trying to say hi to Vic Fuentes, but I did not see Vic Fuentes. So <laughs> didn't he was get just in front of us. I think the entire time we were just like, oh my God, look, it's that person in front it's of us. It's so weird. It's like, okay. I was I'm texting my friends. I was like, Hey guys, the whole simple plan is in front of me and they're like all of them. And I said, I said the whole of them, please the whole, understand what I'm saying. <laughs> the simplest of plans is right here. The simplest plan. Uh, sorry. I'm going to run Damn. an ad break real quick. So I know that most people are sub or not sub. And so I'm sorry, but it gets rid of pre-rolls, which means that people who want to come to hang out in the chat can, can come. And so I want to reduce uh, any any friction of new people who might be checking us out. So I'm gonna run a three minute ad break here. If you don't want to see it, you can subscribe and you can you can no longer see ads. Uh, you don't have to though, but you will just have to see a little bit of advertisement. My dog is crying because he knows that ads suck. Yeah. Uh, here's a three minute ad break. Ah. Now we don't talk for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. Um, so uh, yeah, we saw Kenny and then we headed out. We got a ride back and then immediately had to go to Emo. <laughs> Tom Higginson played. Hey there, Delilah. Uh, Max Beam has played live with the Glory Love. Um, we yeah. missed Travi McCoy and we William Beckett. We missed Travi McCoy again. and William Beckett. Uh, yeah, so that's a we bummer. We kept taking L's with them. I swear to God. It was rough. Uh, Gabe supported was there having the best goddamn time. We also missed him L's again for us. Yep. Gabe. Uh, Gabe hit I, us up. Sorry, we keep taking L's. Great. Gabe, cheers to you. You looked like you're having just the best time of all time. It was crazy. Emo and I was at Resort World. And we left resort world or, or we left the party and we're like, fine, fuck it. We're just going to hang out in the hotel. And I said to myself, uh, this has been a crazy day, right? I've met a bunch of people in bands, um, been freaked out, you know, just like, oh my God, Michelle branch, like all this stuff, like just had this, this really crazy day. And I remembered that like TwitchCon was happening, right? It was like, Lizzie, you know, like make my fucking day. Like I, all this has been amazing. I would trade nothing in the world for it, but you know, what would really make my fucking day is if I saw Hassan just walking by, because <laughs> like that would fucking, that would be crazy. Right? I was like, like, he will die. Yeah. Like I will literally collapse into a puddle if I see, if I see Hassan and like, it's just like, this is just fucking where he would be. Right. It's like, we're just hanging out. We're just drinking. We're getting drinks. We're doing all this stuff. Who the fuck walks by? <laughs> Brian comes up to me. He's like, Lizzie, Lizzie, it's Hassan. Who I was the like, fuck Shut walks up. by, but Hassan and like a bunch of other streamers who I recognize. And I was like, what the fuck? So of course I have to say hi. And so I run over and I'm like, Hey, can I be weird for a second? He's like, yeah, you want a photo? I'm like, absolutely dude. Like, love you. Love your streams. Literally spend my entire day watching your shit. Like, yeah, it was, and it was just like, I'm like shaking. I'm like, holy shit. This is wild. Um, so yeah, it, it ended up all happening all together like that. <laughs> like you, you say things out loud and sometimes they fucking come true. I don't know. But that was like basically just our 25 hours of being awake. Yeah. Uh, just rolling through it, just rocking it. And um, I wouldn't trade anything. It was a great I fucking time. I think it time. was great. I think that was literally, I don't think like us, hopefully us going is not once in a lifetime, but I think the fact that we did this all in 26 hours, that's like a once in a lifetime yeah. thing. I think it was. I felt very hangover minus a lot yes. of the like, violence and danger. Yeah. I added the violence and danger though, because I was like, we need more of the hangover. If it's announced next year, I believe it will be. I I've had this, this sort of thought in the back of my head because of the first year and how like fucking chaos it was and how they announced yeah. like year two, like immediately during that. And like, the now fact they, that, like, they haven't done it again. So I yeah, think they're waiting. I think they're actually doing it right now. Uh, but them announcing it last year made me feel like this is just chaos and they are not going to do this again like there's no way but then they announced sick new world 2024 i'm like okay well they're gonna keep also let's try to see maybe we here. go to sick new god world. get me to sick new world literally um, but i i think that uh i think that it will be happening again i think that they will have a have a follow-up year uh if if that's the case our plan for sure is to go for a few more days not Last year we did it for like a fucking week that was too much we're gonna we're gonna cut it down a little bit I assume I assume they're gonna do it again I had questions because the chaos of last year the fact that they only did two days this year and they had planned for three days last year wind and whatever um and like just the way that this fest is run and the way these things happen but i think that like now that it ran so smoothly this year 
and they figured out how to do these like smaller stages. They removed one of the stages. They only did four and they had like rotation of the stage on there and they had the main stages going back to back. I think that they have it like sorted out enough now where they can consistently do it. And it seems like everyone who actually played it had a great fucking time. Yeah. I will also say the money that they pay these fucking bands is insane and crazy. So uh, as long as they have the money that they want to put behind it. But I think they're also making their fucking money. Yeah. Though. Remember, guys, it's not fake because Live Nation's the one running it. It's not fake because you would say, oh, well, they don't have enough money. It's in Las Vegas, folks. Yeah. This shit prints money. It, it just prints money. So I... I I think they're going to do it again. 